Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I've got an interesting problem and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the same exact solution for both of these. This is a table control for, I think this is a DRE table. There's a lot of these type of uh, hand controls out there for all sorts of different types of tables and I'm gonna show you guys a technique today to go ahead and maybe open up some of these cables and check them out because the answer might not be as simple as you think it is, but it is doable. Okay, let's go ahead and switch this camera around and let's get you in nice and close. All right, guys, this is the cable and this is the inside of the cable. So uh, it was a little bit jacked, as you can see right there. It's a little bit stretched out. I have a second example over here. So I've got a second example here and you can see this one here starting to do it. You see the strain relief and see how it's starting to come out of the uh, bottom of it. Well, this one here was an extreme example of that, and the cables were sitting really far out. You can see this is the embedded strain relief, and that's how far it has been yanked. Now, that is a lot of problems right there, because when you start yanking things, it has to give somewhere else. So if it's been yanked here, that means it probably gives here. So there's a couple things that you should be aware of. You can take these connectors apart. And a lot of people don't know that. They're like, ah, well, how do I get into there? Well, the first thing that you should do is check the strain relief right here. When you're doing your PMs, you should be checking this guy right here anyway. And come to find out what had happened, what happened was it had only one fastener in there. So on the yank strain relief, it only had one fastener. So this guy wasn't even doing his job. That keeps the cable from rotating and it prevents extra yankage like that. So I took the other fastener out and then it's kind of trapped on there. It's kind of captive. There is one other tiny little fastener right here. Whoop, come on camera. So there's another tiny little fastener right here and this, which is a round DIN style connector, it actually is supposed to be held in by a little screw. Now this is like a Bakelite is what it feels like. Um, I'm sure it's not, but I can't get that off because of where it's sitting. So how do we fix that? You take a little flat blade screwdriver just like this, and uh, I'm gonna make some room. I'm gonna make some room by screwing it up a little bit further. And then you have this molded on strain relief. Well, on these strain reliefs, why this camera, you just have to take a flat blade and work it around the end, the very head because the head right here, this first band, is where the molding is. And it's easy to actually break that apart. One of the things you can use to make it easier on you, it's a little bit of this uh, isopropyl rubbing alcohol. I use the 99% pure stuff, and that gives me um, a lot more options. So you put a little bit of alcohol on here, get a little flat blade. I'm not stabbing in, I'm just going in between the strain relief and the cord. They are two separate components. They're just molded together. So all you gotta do is break, break that mold line, just like that. And it does take a little bit more stress than that. And then this guy here will not slide down. You see that? So all I do is take a little bit of this, boop, and put just a little bit of isopropyl rubbing alcohol on there and watch this. See that? I just broke it loose. And now that I have the strain relief down, now I can unscrew the connector from the end point. The problem with this guy, not only was the yank cable, but also they reported that all the functions were in reverse. So when you do joystick to the right, it would go to the left. When you would up, it would go down. It was all in reverse. Well, electrically, that doesn't normally make sense unless you think of controls in like a matrix, and then what it is, you're losing one of your matrix lines, kind of like a keyboard. A keyboard operates in a matrix, and that, I mean, there's not, you know, 105 uh, wires going to your computer. That's not how it operates. It operates in a matrix. Well, controllers, especially like this guy, they do the same thing, and you can see this card right here takes all those inputs, puts them into a matrix, and uses that matrix to figure out what button's being pressed and what direction you intended to go. So here is the inside of the controller. 
This right here is the joystick, and this board right here is for all the push buttons, to which, hmm, I'm missing some things, aren't I? So that means i got to order some more buttons. Lovely. Okay, back to what we are doing. The cord. So the cord right here, I have to fix this guy. So this guy here, you can tell, has been yanked free. It's supposed to sit further down the cord. We will fix that. But the bigger problem is the reversed signals. So you can see right here is the hole where the fastener is supposed to screw in and secure the metal to the insert so it can't rotate because it will just rotate. And when it rotates, things break. And you can see what has happened right here is I have this white line which is supposed to naturally go up to that terminal right there. You can see it. It's a simple fix. It really is. So all I have to do is pull off the old shrink tube, put a new shrink tube on this white wire right here, resolder it, and then re-shrink it. Now, the correct thing to do before I put this all back together is to stick a meter in each end of this cable and verify the pinout, okay, with continuity mode. So just because we don't see any breaks doesn't mean there aren't any or doesn't mean that there aren't any that are partially broken. So what I have to do next is go ahead and let's say brown right here. I'm going to stick one meter lead in the brown terminal. Then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to find the brown, which you can see is right there. Test it for continuity. If I do, that's good. Then check it next to some other ones to make sure that there is no common continuity, which would be a problem. Then switch to another one, like the purple right there. See purple? Purple, check it, good. Check some other ones. Nope. Next. Yellow, etc., etc. You guys get it. So anyway, guys, it's uh, I've got a couple of these controllers that i got to fix, and it's not that big of a deal. It just requires some diligence, that's for sure. And um, you gotta make sure that when we put this guy back together, we secure those fasteners on those strain reliefs, and we gotta secure the fasteners like right here on this collar, because other words, it's just gonna rotate and it's going to break. And rotating and breaking equals back here at my shop. It is what it is. Anyway guys, just wanted to show you a quick how-to when it comes to these cables. Remember, things like alcohol, Alcohol sometimes is your friend if you work on electronics for more than one reason. Rubbing alcohol is a very versatile tool, especially when you have shrink tube or when you have things like strain reliefs that you have to reposition. Now, after the strain relief is done and the repair is done, I'm going to slide it near back to its position. And then what we do is we take something called weather stripping adhesive and you put it around the cable and then you slide it back into place and then you let it cure for 24 hours. Weather stripping adhesive is some nasty stuff. The color of it is naturally black and if it gets on your skin or if it gets on your clothes, it is not going off, okay? It adheres very strongly. It's one of the most versatile adhesives that you can use as a biomed, but remember, it's permanent. And the only way to break that permanence is heat, okay? So guys, alcohol, weather stripping adhesive, Diligence. Pay attention and do your checks before you put it back together. Continuity checks on each and every wire and make sure to check for common continuity, which means you check adjacent wires to make sure there's no little wires touching inside it. Anytime you have stretched and twisted conductors, things like fraying are pretty common. So check to make sure you have no common continuity. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you like this video. If you do, please give me a thumbs up. I do appreciate it and so does Google which is why this channel has grown 60% in the last year, 60% thanks to all of you guys.